summer. A lot of college kids are done for the semester, taking a well-deserved break. But um, before you know it, the next semester is going to be here because summers mm -hmm. fly by. With that, uh, how are things looking over at Oakland University? Kelly Fleming joining us now on the Megacast. She's the Senior Associate Director for Undergraduate Admissions over at the college. Great to have you with us, Kelly. How are you? I'm well. Thank you so much for having me. So how is the fall semester looking um, coming up? Do you anticipate more kids are starting to, you know, as we emerge out of the pandemic, they want to get back to the campus and have that campus experience? Absolutely. We've been talking with a lot of students throughout this spring and, and starting into the summer about um, coming to campus for the fall semester. And we've heard a lot of excitement from students and we're really excited to welcome, welcome them back and welcome some new students to campus too. So um, we're planning lots of welcome back activities for the fall. We're planning um, classes, schedules already set and ready for students to register. So it's looking good for fall. It's looking like students will be able to um, have a great experience and and continue some of those in-person activities that they have been wanting to have. It, it really is because when we're talking about college, a four-year uh, college campus, for a lot of the uh, students, not all of them, but let's just say a large majority of them, not so much about your studies really that first semester, that first year. It's about that college experience. And for so many of them, they miss that uh, going virtual, but also for some students, they decided to um, take classes at the community college. So are you seeing more students transferring into the college or at least you know, trying to transfer some of those credits as well? Absolutely, yes. Over about 60% of OU students have brought in some kind of transfer credit. So we're been helping students transfer credit in for many, many years and, and happy to do so. So yes, we saw lots of students attend the community college this past year um, so that they could stay close to home and get started on their studies. And we've been working with them this entire year to transfer those credits in. So um, the good news is lots of students have been talking to us previously and we've helped them plan those transfer credits. Um, and we're talking to some students that just didn't know they were going to transfer this year or next year, and they're reaching out to us now, and we're able to help them transfer those credits into the university, and we're able to help them get registered for next fall. Um, and the great thing is that registration is open for our current or for our incoming students. So if you know they want to look at what life could be like next fall, we can absolutely help them do that right now, even though they're just finishing up. Like you said, getting ready for that well-deserved break. Um, they could have next fall all ready to go so they don't have to worry about that come the end of summer. Because there are still uh, some high school students that are graduating uh, this week or last week or coming up. For some of them, they may still not know what they want to do um, come the fall semester because they were kind of waiting to see how this pandemic was going to shake out. Because if I'm going to, you know, the University of Michigan or Michigan State and I'm spending all this money and I can't have the experience, then maybe I do want to stay closer. Or maybe you have a family member that you're concerned about, so you want to be closer uh, to them. And what percentage of your students do you anticipate or do you think typically are out of state um, students or like local students as well? Yeah, a majority of Oakland students are from the Tri-County area, um, followed by some outer areas of the state of Michigan and then out-of-state students. Um, and we see students choose Oakland so that they can be in close proximity to their home, even if they're living on campus. They want to be able, like you said, to get home to a family member. They want to be able to work and commute to campus. And so Oakland does offer that opportunity to them. Since we They want to be able to take their laundry home to mom. We know. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> benefit. Why not if you have the opportunity to? And many of our students are working students, so they may already have jobs in the local area and they wanna be able to continue with that employer and build that relationship. And because we don't require that first year students live on campus, then we do offer that opportunity for them to continue their employment, help make some money towards paying for school and then build connections on campus at the same time. And Kelly, I will say too, I remember um, when I first moved uh, to this area, Oakland University, I feel like the school, the college has really grown mm -hmm. so much over the past 10, 15 years, yeah. and not just uh, right there on campus, but in the programs that it's uh, offering so many of the students as well. So do you think that's helping to attract more students to stay here at Oakland? 
Yeah, I think that's a great benefit for students is that Oakland has been looking at what are the needs of the employers that we work so closely with. Employers love to hire OU students as interns and then upon graduation because they can work throughout their time at Oakland. So they don't need to just train them for a couple months over the summer. If a student wants to continue that employment, they can. And so I think that's a great benefit um, to the OU student. And we have lots of working students on campus. And so we want to help them be able to build meaningful connections. As you mentioned, when we started talking, it's about the experience, right? We want them to find mentors and um, meet employers and gain some really valuable skills and, and enjoy their time with us while they're doing it. And we want to help them do that. And we do think um, we are very lucky to have so many community colleges here locally as well. How does that program work if I started a community college and then try to transfer those credits into Oakland University? Yeah, great question. Um, so we provide transfer guides to students so we can meet with them virtually or in person and provide them with you know the majors they're considering at the university and what credits could transfer right off the bat. We could say, if you're interested in these three majors, here are the exact credits you can transfer in from your local community college, and we can help you make that plan. We can help them time out when they should be applying so they can make that smooth transfer. So we work with students for as close as like they might call us right now and we might get plans ready for next fall. We're also working with those um, students who are maybe planning for one and two years out. They might just be starting at the community college. They might, as you mentioned earlier, just be thinking about starting at the community college and we can have that conversation about which credits transfer to their program. Um, Oakland no longer limits any transfer credit. So as many credits as students can take towards their program, they can do that. Um, and we also have many articulation agreements Agreements we've signed with our partners at the community colleges in Michigan. So there are additional ways for students to transfer credit in. And so we provide that on the web. We'll do that in a meeting with them. Um, and even if students are undecided on program, you mentioned there's there's over 120 programs that students can choose from. If they are undecided, we can talk about some good strategies to make sure what they're doing counts and keeps them on track to graduation. So they don't need to lose any time and money in that transfer process. I think we hear a lot of scary stories about that happening, but you know, the universities and community colleges, especially Oakland and our partners, have worked really closely over the last few years to really mitigate that and make it as easy for students as possible, as efficient for them as possible, because we want them to be able to count these credits. It's hard-earned work that they've done, and we want them to, you know, get to their um, final destination as quickly as we can get them there. Kelly Fleming with us here on the Mega Cast. She's the Senior Associate Director for the under Undergraduate Admissions over at Oakland University. And Kelly, it's so refreshing to hear you say that as someone who, um, I was lucky enough, I went to College of Charleston, but we had a community college that you could pay C of C tuition, but take the classes uh, at the community college. But it'd be frustrating because sometimes like your English 102 wouldn't transfer, but the 101 would. And you're like, look, I'm, I'm wasting this this time and uh, and that's what you don't want to do so I will say to everyone because um, do you anticipate you're going to have more transfer students uh, over the next year or two because of so many of these programs that the state of Michigan has started throughout the COVID pandemic yeah, absolutely. Um, the state of Michigan has the Futures for Frontliners program and Oakland has instituted a frontline worker scholarship. So we're definitely in support of students starting at the community college and transferring in. And to your point, we, we don't want students to feel like they need to guess and assume that credits will or will not transfer. Um, we are happy to meet with them early in their, in their plans and continue to meet as things change, right? So, if plan A doesn't work, we'll move to plan B. And so as students start at the community college and maybe change programs and things like that, they are welcome to stay in contact with us so we can kind of help navigate that with them. And students shouldn't feel alone in this process. There's a lot of people in the state that are really working to make sure students are able to obtain degrees and Oakland is in full support of that. And we wanna be the, the best um, resource for students that we can be. That's great to hear because uh, as you're planning your career, even if you're not sure if you're going to go ahead for that four-year degree, at least be looking at that schedule on which classes transfer and which ones don't. Uh, Kelly Fleming with us here on the Megacast from Oakland University. And with that, uh, Kelly, I know that you mentioned that uh, admission is still open, so it's not too late for students to uh, make the pull the plug and, and come to OU. 
No, not too late at all. We're still accepting applications for fall if they have not started and registration is open so we can move them through the process pretty quickly. We have events happening virtually throughout the summer as well. So if they want to stop in one day, learn about it, apply in, be admitted, we have those programs available. Um, and yes, we're working with students um, throughout that process. So there's lots of opportunity for students who are still wondering. And perhaps like you mentioned, students are starting and a little unsure. If they have an idea, we can run with that and kind of help them determine what programs might be good fits for them and kind of at least help get them thinking about what might be right for them. Is it too late to get financial aid though? No, not at all. So even if students haven't quite fil finished their FAFSA or sent it to Oakland, we can also help them with that process. Um, we do want to help students get that done as quickly as possible. That's a really important piece of the puzzle. Um, but we do have scholarships and grants available for students in addition to the federal financial aid. So um, we can absolutely help students with that process still. What's the uh, application process like? Well, Oakland does not have any fees at the institution. So when we're talking about affordability, you know, once students are enrolled at Oakland, it, there are no fees. Um, so there are no application fees as well. So it's an online application students can fill out. We require their previous college transcripts and we will look at their previous um, GPA and their trend in credits to admit them to the university. Um, so it can be a pretty quick process if, if they can get those documents to us. Um, so just a couple of weeks and we prioritize the next semester. So if students are even looking to, to come for the second half of summer, we can still do that too. So um, yeah, they can absolutely connect with us. We just require a few documents and then we can kind of help them with the scholarship process. We're offering fall scholarships all the way up until the priority deadline of August 1st. So with that, Kelly, too, how much um, of the fall semester do you anticipate is going to be in person? As many as we can. So um, I would say we're almost near um, our typical on-campus capacity, not quite, um, but much more than we would have had over the last year. So I think we're looking close to probably 80% of our courses um, being back to our usual schedule. So um, still working hard to, to maintain any safety guidelines that we can. So with that, um, I know there's been uh, conversations about students having to be vaccinated. Uh, Oakland University, is that just the students that are on campus or all students? students. That's a great question. At this time, we are only requiring students who are living in campus housing to be vaccinated. Um, so that's an important distinction and an important distinction for students who are going to school over the next couple of months. Um, each school is going to have different requirements. So it's important just as you would ask about other admissions criteria or housing requirements. It's an important distinction that not everyone will be the same. It's such a crazy time <laughs> though that uh, we're even talking about some of this stuff, but you don't know and what's, you know, it, it may be completely different uh, come the fall time as well. I mean, look at us that three months ago, we were in the middle of a crazy search here in the state of Michigan, and now it looks like we are hopefully uh, going to be back to somewhat normal come this summer. So you never know what the fall looks like. And uh, so many students are going to be excited to be back in person. It's going to be a fun fall. So with that, Kelly Fleming with us again, a Senior Associate Director over at the Undergraduate Admissions Office for Oakland University. Kelly, we always appreciate uh, your time and the time of all your team members as well. And uh, we wish you the best of the summer, but also happy fall as well. Thank you so much. Wishing you a great summer as well. And congrats to all the recent um, graduates, as you mentioned, um, from the community colleges and high schools. We're excited for them. Hey, Kelly, next time we, we want a, a, like a pop in, a, you know, a Grizzly the Bear. Can oh, you make that happen? Perfect. Like where he yes. just runs across yes. the screen behind you or something? Yes. Yeah, next time we'll be on campus and we'll, we'll make sure to invite Grizz. I think that's uh, a great idea.